Hello guys and welcome back to this week's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at two Apple MacBook Airs that I got off of eBay for $100. Was it a big mistake? Let's open the package and find out. Here we have the box containing two original model MacBook Airs. One being the higher spec 1.8GHz model, hopefully with an SSD. Underneath the outer shipping bag we have the laptops wrapped very well in bubble wrap as well as cardboard with foam on each end. I'm very impressed with this packaging, good job eBay seller. And here we have the MacBook Airs themselves, they're in good but not great condition. With a good cleaning these will definitely look a lot better. So now that we've unboxed them, I think it's time we power them up and see whether they function as described. The high spec 1.8GHz model is complete with a working battery, however it was said that it gets occasional kernel panics. Booting this laptop up we can see it seems to function fine, if a little bit slow. On closer inspection, the high spec model doesn't actually have the SSD as it's supposed to, which is definitely a bummer. The other laptop is the original 1.6GHz low end model and it doesn't actually have a battery in it which makes it quite top heavy and also gets the occasional kernel panics as well according to the seller. Another thing I did notice is just how messed up the trackpad button appears to be. Honestly I think I might just concentrate on the other model since this one doesn't even have a battery. Before we clean these laptops up, I think we should open them up and see just how they work. Thanks to Luke Miani for actually suggesting I apply some new thermal paste. I'm hoping that updating the macOS version and fixing the thermals will help get rid of those kernel panics. Opening up these MacBooks is pretty easy. No special Pentelope driver is required thanks to the fairly standard Phillips head screws on the base of the laptop. Once inside we can see that this MacBook Air is using a replacement battery. To be a bit safer I unplugged and removed the battery. The cooling system is held in place by several small Phillips head screws. Once removed we get our first look at the thermal paste that has clearly gone bad over the years. I cleaned off the CPU and GPU dies as well as the metal cooling plate. While inside the laptop I decided to clean it up and also remove the metal filings that had accumulated on the charging port. Look, I know my thermal paste application isn't that great and feel free to criticize me in the comments but it's definitely going to help the thermal performance of this laptop. Thank you very much to Luke for suggesting I do this, clearly the MacBook Air really needed it. Now it's time to put it all back together. This was also quite easy and it all fitted back together nicely. I actually ended up borrowing a few screws from the 1.6GHz model as it doesn't even have a battery. With it all back together I thought it would be a good time to upgrade the operating system. I'm going to install 10.7 Lion as it's the newest operating system you can install without really screwing around with the firmware. So with macOS 10.7.3 installed I thought I would do the upgrade to get it to 10.7.5 but big mistake, it actually stops it from working altogether. I tried rebooting into safe mode, I tried resetting the NVRAM, the SMC, nothing would actually fix it. So what I had to do was reinstall macOS 10.7 again and I guess I'm just going to have to not upgrade it any further. So we're actually stuck in 10.7.3 still and the kernel panics are actually still happening. Turns out they're caused by the replacement displays both of these laptops actually have. Setting it to the maximum brightness actually crashes the system. To get around this I disabled the automatic brightness and had to just remember not to move the brightness slider to full. Aside from those quirks we actually have one fully functional MacBook Air. Which doesn't mean a whole lot since these perform about as well as a mouse in a spinning wheel powering an electric car. What I'm saying is it's slow, really slow. That can be blamed on the 4200 RPM hard disk as well as the woefully underpowered 1.8GHz P7700 Intel Core 2 Duo CPU. To make the laptop this thin and light back in 2008, a lot of performance shortcuts had to be made. So what can you actually do with this 11 year old MacBook Air? Well considering the battery is lasting around 3 hours per charge, it's great for web browsing, watching YouTube and typing up documents. Something that wasn't butchered to make the laptop thin was thankfully the wonderful backlit keyboard. It feels great and has just the right amount of travel. Under this little door on the side you've got a single USB 2, one headphone jack and a display output. Now it's definitely time I give the MacBooks a good cleaning. With some antibacterial wipes, eucalyptus oil and paper towels I got both laptops looking pretty clean. Aside from some very minor dents, these MacBook Airs look pretty good. 
Even the hinges on these laptops are still good. So there we have it, two MacBook Airs for $100. Were they worth the price? I'm actually going to have to say no. While they were cheap, only one of them came with a battery, and considering they still have kernel panics at full brightness until the correct displays are fitted, it just isn't worth upgrading them further. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, definitely feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in next week's video.